Testing, testing. Let's go. This is insane, bro. What's so Who's your what? What's your uh, genre of podcast? Well, I like to believe comedy, but other people might <laughs> like not think the same. Like TBD, TBD on the comedy. Yeah, we'll see how the content turns out. Um, but so the main topics will be sports. I feel like I'm trivial pursuit. Sports and entertainment, Nashville and travel. We'll talk about your great realtor job. And oh, geez. Nashville real estate. We'll throw in there for people looking to move here. <laughs> Use me. I'm I'm the best realtor in town. I'll vouch for that. <laughs> You're stupid. We're on, fellas. All right, ready to start. Should, okay. I like so. I like this. Okay. I like the free flow. Well, so what would you do? So whatever we need to do, but I like. You've already explained what you want to be doing with the podcast. Okay. Well, oh ready? wow. Well, my name's Mark Block. This, welcome to Nashville Block Party. Um, we're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about entertainment. We're going to talk about Nashville. We're going to talk about travel. Right now, I have uh, one of my good buddies here, Mark the Sauce slash Moonshine Mariani. Mariani. Let's Mariani. Go. How do we? Let's get this out of the way first. Correct pronunciation. This is a big deal, and it came up in the media early on. And the truth is, is I say it wrong. If you're an authentic Italian, Mariani is how you're supposed to say it. And when we were building the railroad tracks in north central Montana, my family decided we got way more English accent and we just said, decided Mariani. Mariani. And so it's got that like e to it. And so my grandpa said that's how he said it. So that's how I'll say it. I had, an argue, I had a couple arguments last summer in, uh, when I went to Italy, but uh, that's just the way it is, man. I just, I'm just rolling with it. That was his uh, – that was what he wanted. So, Mariani. So, Mark is the pride and joy of the state of Montana. <laughs> Maybe the most famous person to ever come out of there. Um, Arguably. Population of 26. From Haver, Montana. Spelt like Favre doesn't rhyme with Favre. Uh, I'm proud to say I've been to Haver, Montana. That's right. Your hometown. We, we, uh, we lit that place on fire for a little bit. We did. It's a great town. Uh, been to Missoula. You went to college at University of Montana. Also, a, a, a high quality community <laughs> on the western side. No, I don't want her. You can have her. It was a beautiful place to grow up, man. Just a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a scenic area where you know the wind blows at a at a very high speed, and uh, it gets extremely cold in the winter time, and extremely hot in the summertime. <laughs> it's, and I will it's say- the, the the most. Uh, both sides of the spectrum you can possibly get. And when I got to Haver, Montana, I was staying at the brand new Comfort Inn, which was the Ritz Carlton of Haver. And the Ballin. first thing I texted Mark when I arrived is, why are there Canadian flags everywhere? And he said, Broski, you're 30 miles from the border. Damn right. And That's I right. Did not know that, but a lot of things made sense. Yeah, we have railroad, we have border patrol, we have farming, and that's about the size of it, man. That's where the Clamato comes from. The Kamado addiction, I should say. So for the three of you out there that don't know Mark, he played several years, many years with the Tennessee Titans, went to a Pro Bowl, um, also played with the Chicago Bears. We've known each other for over a decade. When was your rookie year? I think that's when we met. Yeah, it was 10 years ago. I got here 10 years ago as of last fall. Um, and we probably met right then, uh, either at a dimly lit losers or tin roof. It was before at, the green room. It was actually at the tin roof at the back bar. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> where you where many great friends are made and a lot of memories are forgotten back there. May have been when Henry and the Seahawks was playing R.I.P. Henry. Maybe so. I was more of a Chris Weaver genre, uh area in my my time there and on the back back live band, but I just those days, man, I would really do a lot to rewind and go back to those days. I oh. mean, the, the back the back before Green Room, all the young bucks out there who know the, the two sides now, the skinny bar, which is Tin Roof, and the hip-hop bar, which is Green Room, that didn't exist before. It no. was non-existent. And we used to just do God knows what in the back of Tin Roof Bar. I mean, uh, thank God the social media wasn't so rampant back in the day. I, I was just going to say, for <laughs> for all the young guns out there that knew the new trendy Nashville, old school Nashville was a billion times better. No one had Instagram, no one had Snapchat. There was kind of maybe sort of Facebook, but you couldn't really do anything. And Mark will attest, old school Tin Roof, you'd be at the back bar, the front bar, in the kitchen, in the freezer with 
athletes, some major country stars that 10 years ago weren't that big that are really big, or some that were really big 10 years ago that are still really big doing <laughs> questionable things. I feel like I feel like if you were on that little in the front by that little sidebar by the ice machine, that was the you know the ice machine yeah. that was the most VIP access you could possibly get in Nashville. Just no crowd and you were back there just chilling and that was like they should have been handing out wristbands or something. I mean it was just epic. If you made it back there and you were allowed to stand back there behind the bar, you were in, bro. If you leaned against the ice machine and didn't get kicked out, you made <laughs> By it Jesus. In Nashville. By Jesus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I feel like it was that and playing the Grand Ole Opry was how you knew if you made it in Nashville, Tennessee. Or the Troubadour. Oh, we were just talking about that last night and none of these guys knew the Troubadour. <laughs> Dude, it's gone, man. R.I.P. Talk about R.I.P. It's gone. It was upstairs second floor on broadway when nobody went to broadway you used to, back in the day you'd only go to broadway if like you had your parents in town or friends and it was kind of funny and yeah it was a joke like you'd go to tootsies and there was only one bathroom downstairs and there wasn't a door on the stall there was only a curtain so god forbid you had to take care of business dude but hold here's you had to hold the curtain and pray no one walked in. I didn't have that. I didn't. I was always. I would have ran for my life, but I didn't have that experience. I used to walk to the Renaissance Hotel. Yeah, just in case. you had all the sneaky spots. But what was what we were talking about is anybody there. We all know Nashville. People are writing music. They're trying to get their names out there. You know, they want that record deal, all that stuff. For the real barroom warriors and the real stage presence and great background singers questionable dance moves you had troubadour the karaoke bar that was on the second floor of i think it's alan jackson's now and we used to go there every single weekend after games it was me it was jake locker it was chewy it was whoever was chewy me by the way subject to uh you know getting ridiculed that night and we were we thought we were the big show. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about, grew up in Haver, Montana, about 20 people, maybe 50. Yeah. Played at University of Montana. And by the way, I will again vouch for this. I have been to Montana maybe seven or eight times. I've even been to Bozeman, which is the home of Montana State, Mark's biggest competitor. And if you name drop Mark Mariani, 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 <laughs> at a bar there, everybody still like you think he was – I can't think of a good celebrity, but somebody in Block in Nashville. It, yeah, no. exactly. Just like me in Nashville. That's well, exactly it. But I want to ask you, so moving from Montana, being drafted in the NFL draft, coming to Nashville, Tennessee, which back then was not as big as it is now, but it, you're still playing in the NFL. What was that transition like for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm from a really small town, 10,000 people, and – um Growing up in Montana, you don't have professional sports, so uh, it, there was a, it ran the gamut on who you rooted for and whatever. But for me, when it came to football, the University of Montana was everything. And so I went there. I walked on the career. You know, my career there was great and all those things. But you know, I was still a small town guy. And so when I when I landed in Nashville and got drafted and all and all that. This was the biggest city I'd ever seen, dude. I mean, I'd traveled and I've seen stuff, but to, to land in Nashville um, was such a blessing because it was so much my style. Uh, but it was massive, dude. I, I had to use GPS for years to figure out what I was doing. But in reality, it's you such a small, big Quest city. And put out the, the directions. Yeah, to get yeah, right. I know I'm, we're getting old, but I, I, I really like am. I always think about how blessed I was to land in this city in the time that I did, in the transition that this place was going through and all those things. And to be a part of, you know, I don't know, that was five years of what the city of Nashville, you know, grew and, and blew up and all those things. And we're just in the center of it, just like just having a good time, man. And so the transition was um, was easy. It was fun. It was a whirlwind. You know, I was a seventh round draft pick. So I just came in trying to scrap and trying to earn a spot and and uh you know try to make practice squad or whatever i mean i was i was not i was not the big name guy that was expected to do anything but that first year man i got shot out of a cannon and things just skyrocketed and and i feel like it just flew by and went to the pro bowl and just it was madness man it was total madness and 
I don't know, I just tried to keep up and hold on. And like I said, even though it was stressful, just have a good time. So speaking of Nashville, right now, I'll brag on Mark for a minute. He's become one of the best realtors in Nashville. The man, for <laughs> all you people out there wanting to move to Nashville, look this guy up, send him a DM. He will take care of you. Thank and you. And you are also a major presence on Nashville Sports Talk Radio. Yeah. Um, because people are listening and want to know about Nashville, want to know about the market, and people are moving here from all over the country, one of the fastest growing cities in America. Tell us about you know the real estate market and your transition and everything. Well, it's honestly... As I grab another white claw. Yeah. I mean, listen, Nashville does a great job of selling itself. I don't have to do any of that. And... I got in the real estate market because I was investing on the side through my whole career. And I was trying to do flips and had a couple rental properties and did the Airbnb thing. And so I got into it, got my real estate license, and the city of Nashville has become so popular on its own. I didn't have to do, you know, you don't have to sell anybody on that. And it has just become such a great place uh, to land for people with families, for young professionals. I mean, for so many years, Nashville was country music, yep. healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was some old school printing stuff going on in the city, and that if if any of those things sort of hit the fan and and fell out from underneath us, Nashville, you know, wouldn't have the same effect. But now we've been in, we're so insulated. We have so many layers. There's tech. There's finance. There's hospitality. There's amazing restaurants and bars and the scene. I mean, so. Nashville is so fun, and I think anybody with any vibe you're looking for uh, could settle down here and have a great time, and, and that's what I love. And, and some people aren't loving the development and the growth. Uh, obviously, for my professional career, it's it's uh, it's been going well. But outside of that, I love seeing new faces, man. I love seeing new things. I just I'm slow to the game, but I just went to the Virgin Hotel oh, rooftop, great. you know this and all this stuff that was totally totally non-existent. I mean, it wouldn't even have been a pipe dream when uh, 10 years ago and now it's on every single corner so anyway nashville has become the it city on its own but and we're getting a w hotel we're yeah. getting a one hotel i just saw the other day we've had hedge funds from new york move here we've yeah. had nissan from california move here it's there's jobs there's growth there's it's, social there's entertainment we got it all here right now what, what i love doing and i get investor clients coming in and I had this point on the bridge where I stop and we look at all the cranes. And again, remember, I got a little small town pea brain. So I thought this when I look at it, I go, every city is doing this. Every city has this going on and this is totally normal or whatever. And then people from out of town or the coastlines are coming in, bringing investment money and, and, and you know, whatever, 1031 and out of properties and trying to get investment you know, going here. Go, no, this is not normal, guys. This is not normal to see 20 cranes when you look out, when you're looking in one direction. And I tell you, I think we'll look back on it, you know, still, you know, fondly because what's going on in this city is really fun and just we're, uh, we're right in the middle of it. Yeah. And I mean, I have the opposite path of you. I grew up in New Jersey, for those who don't know, outside New York City. Went to school in Miami, was an attorney in Philadelphia before I moved here 16 years ago. So I have the opposite experience of you. You moved here from a town of 10,000. I was from a town of 15,000 in New Jersey, but every town in New Jersey is about a half a mile long. So that's not from being from a small town, which I learned when I moved here. And I actually came from where I, growing up, I thought all cities were like New York City. So when I moved to Nashville, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, Whoa, that person and waved back at me? That is so bizarre. All my friends up in the Northeast were like, do they have running water? Do you ride a horse down the street and wear a cowboy hat? But the one thing about Nashville that I think we can both relate to, um, obviously for you being in the NFL, you had those perks. But I've never, and I've been all over the country. I'm at 46 states going for 50. Um, I've never been in a town as friendly and helpful as Nashville. Yeah. I've lived a lot of places. People here, it's the easiest place to network, easiest place to make friends. And there's just something weird about the fact that people want to help you. Yeah. And nothing in it for them. And even now with all the transplants and stuff, it really hasn't changed. Like there's just a vibe here that when people move to town, they take you under their wing they introduce you to their friends and you just network and socialize so much faster than other places. I think it's, I think with all of the 
without with with all of the people moving here, I mean, there you rarely see someone born and raised in Nashville <laughs> in here anymore. And if you are, if they are, they're a unicorn. Um, but what I what I see going on is that you know sort of that dorm mentality where everybody's here enjoying it and having a great time, but it's also like people are going out of their way to you know be friendly, like you said, make friends, and, and everything's so close and convenient. That's, you know, the national championship game, guy fires off one group text and pretty soon he's got a house full of people because everybody's just like, everybody's in the same area, uh, wanting to hang. And it, it's, it's just a very energetic, very vibrant community. And, you know, I'm getting older, starting to have kids, doing all these things, getting old and boring and all this stuff. And then you go 10 minutes outside the city and you have the best schools and you have great neighborhoods and communities and endless sidewalks for your kids to ride bikes. So Whatever mix you're looking for, uh, you can find it here, and and so I'm I'm in love with the city. And to be honest with you, when I came here, anywhere I would have ended up, I did not believe that I would not be going back to Montana at some point in my life. And I love the state of Montana. I love the lifestyle. I love everything about it. I love losing cell phone service outside of town. I love. I don't. I freak out without <laughs> cell phone service. For yeah, six minutes. I've actually witnessed some of this. This is not a good Every situation. Every time I go to Montana, I have a heart attack <laughs> because if you move oh, too far to God. your left, you cannot get a text message. He out. is so it's a drama queen when it comes to his <laughs> cell phone service. I just, That's I, actually it's fair. so it's worse than what. However, you could describe it, it's worse than that because if you don't have your cell phone. It's a bad, it's a bad deal. If but I ever committed a crime, you don't even have to put me in jail. <laughs> Just take my cell phone away for two hours, and I you're will punished. never do it again. You're punished. Uh, but I mean, anyway, this city. A bad crime, though. Sorry, mom. This city, uh, kind of. Anyway, this city. Um, it uh, there was something special about it, man. So when I got done and retired after 2017, I brought my family back here, and we're still in the thick of it. We live right outside the Gulch and see all the chaos and hear it you know all the time and we love it we love being in the middle of it so one of what's what's transition a little take a nice segue um and talk about we've been on many trips together yeah we've been to your other stomping ground of the the oc yep we've been to vegas um we've been to a lot of fun places yeah so let's talk a little bit about traveling because outside of my instagram being at the block agency shameless plug i also have <laughs> at chewy's travel tips give it a follow um, yes who's like chewy again who's chewy chewy is me <laughs> okay. um it's my nickname it makes no sense don't worry about it but it makes two, perfect sense it makes perfect sense but we're gonna save that for season two episode three <laughs> um just know that i am also at I'm also Chewy and at Chewy's Travel Tips. Uh, I like to travel. Mark likes to travel. Um, so where is, you talked about earlier going to Italy. Yeah. I, I lived in Italy. I've been there. No, you times. didn't. Did you not know that? No. I did a semester in law school in Italy. Holy. 12 weeks in Rome. Did, wow. Yep. Did the, uh, been around the whole country. Been back four or five times. Was wow, dude. Filmed Jealous. Filmed a TV show there. Wow. If you didn't know, I was on one. Um, that shameless stuff. plug. Um, a lot of shameless plugs. Because <laughs> it's all right. I keep going. I I'll named the podcast after myself. Yes. Anyway, what's the best place you've traveled? Oh, geez. Well, I love that Italy trip. We went to Europe. We went to Switzerland, which was epic. Um, you know, we went to the Amalfi Coast and Capri and Rome, and um, I. But I, I got to be honest. Again. I'm getting old. Things are slowing down. I can't pull the, you know, after hours, 3 a.m.ers anymore. I can. And I took a trip with wifey one time to Thailand. And we did, we went pretty hard in Thailand. And I always think if I had the freedom and the free reign to go and just, you know, leave, leave little man Mav and take off, I would go back and do, you know, whatever. Colombia, Thailand, Cambodia, that whole that whole area of the world cuz it's just a different lifestyle, man. Talk about losing cell phone service. You get out there, you lo- you lo- you lose a little bit of everything out in Thailand. So. And a quick Dignity. shout out to Mark's wife, Carly. She's <laughs> awesome. She's also his real estate partner. That's right. She's the boss. His beautiful child Mav, named after the character from Top Gun. Yes. Or maybe not, but I would I'm going to go with that anyway. 
Um, yeah. So tell us about Thailand. That's one place I've never been on that part of the world. I've been to Bali and Singapore, but I've never done Thailand. Thailand. Well, man, I, listen, I'm, I happen to love the food. Um, and so you got the beaches, you got the food, you got the, uh, you got the real with the wifey massages yes but that yes. are very cost effective they yeah they're the the wifey was there is there for the massages um but you know you, you just it's the lifestyle man it's just when i think about you know just grinding so hard every day as a real estate agent man just pulling my hair out just working for all the people and all working for you marky and i think <laughs> Where do where do I want to go and get away and what what do I have in my mind immediately? It's that Thailand trip. But um, how do you say their famous food? Geez. How do you pronounce it? Pad Thai. I was thinking of another one. Oh, uh, with a ph and an o. General Sao. I think it's pronounced pho. <laughs> What is it? Pho, not pho. I don't know, even pho? know what you're talking about. I think it's pho. I think you got it. And I think it's from Thailand, right? <laughs> you don't put me on the spot like that. I said, yeah. I specifically said this food, the beaches, and the the massages. Okay. okay I guess you well, did call me out on the food, well, though. We could go back to Italy and <laughs> say, is it marinara, like marinara? Oh God, pho, 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 pho. Oh, Vietnamese, my bad. See, dude, see what you did there. See, I haven't been. I'm sorry. Oh, man. It's really good, though. Pad Thai is great, also, which obviously Pad Thai. I know. I was so like, from I was, Thailand. you put me on the spot. I was like, what the hell is he talking? I'm like, uh, uh, fried I rice? I don't know. On Chewy's travel tips <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I know seriously. Chewy's, Chewy's travel tips should have Spaghetti a concierge is that's from Italy. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Okay, we got that. And pizza. Uh, Yes. Yes. So when you were in Rome, do you remember any like favorite restaurants, favorite spots? Dude, I will did? I will throw myself under the bus because I am such a sucker for some of the tourist stuff. Oh please. I will Me do too. a double decker red bus all, all day, day long. All, <laughs> all day, day long. Day. And I tell people that and they're just disgusted with me. I'm like, no, it's really cool. It's really fun. It's a great way to see the city. Um gosh, dude. I have a whole list that I wish I could pull out. Uh, and and I'll I'll uh, I'll tell you some of the restaurants, but we have the 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 goofy travel guy who yeah. who, uh, who likes to do the um, the tourist things and see all the his, historic stuff and see the you know Roman Empire and and go to the Vatican and all that. But then you have Carly who will, is a savant for finding the best food and the best wine and dine. And we went to we went to um, I want to always say Sailor Jerry's, but there's this like there's this like members only cocktail bar in Rome in this alley. And okay, because there's actually, I want to say it's called the drunken ship. There's an American bar in one of the piazzas there where if you want to go see all the frat guys that are study abroad, getting drunk, watching SEC football, there's a place in Rome to go to. And I believe it's called the drunken ship. Really? Yes. I, I spent many nights there in law school and last year. <laughs> Was, you have, I've been lying about my age forever, so we'll go with when I was 35. You have all I'm these memories 35. of when you were in college, and you just were like, I'm going back to Rome to relive those days. I will say my favorite restaurant in Rome, it's called Pier Luigi, at Pier Luigi. Every celebrity on earth has been there. They're the nicest people, the best food. We've DM'd on Instagram. Whoa, I'm you guys so were DMing? Time. I'm kind of big in Rome. Um, Pier Luigi, here it is. This seafood is out of the world. I would also say my favorite hotel is the Hotel Hassler. Great bar. Um, wow. Right aqua in the back, right on top of the Spanish steps for those who haven't been there. Um, and I will tell one quick story. When I was in Rome in law school, my last day there, I had to go by myself to see Trevi Fountain because I hadn't been. Hell yeah. And I was crossing the street. And this was before cell phones. And a Italian woman on a Vespa, if you've never been there, everybody drives scooters, ran a red light, ran me over, threw me in the air, tire mark across my chest. Wow. Woke up on the ground with ambulance, EMT no. all over me. Oh, my Didn't God. know where I was. Looked at my watch. Oh Couldn't understand why it was 11 p.m. and it was light out. Spoiler alert, it was 11 a.m. 
Uh, nice. Couldn't speak English, refused to get in an ambulance. A very nice British couple came up, nursed me back to health, walked me around the city. For those who haven't wow. been to Rome, it's actually bigger than New York City. Yeah. I was in a drugstore, didn't know my name, didn't know why I was in Italy, didn't really know where I was, was totally blacked out, and for once in my life, I was sober. And in the drugstore getting aspirin because of my headache, I got a tap on my shoulder, and it was two people from my law school program. Wow. In a city of God knows how many million. And you had a tire mark across your chest. Tire mark across my chest. (laughs) Got back. One of the girls in the program was a nurse. She sent me to the hospital. Turned out I had a giant concussion. Nice. Um, The worst part of that story is because we were traveling after it was the last day in the program for a couple weeks, I shipped all my stuff back to the States and my mom washed the shirt with the tire mark across You could have framed it. I wanted to frame it. (laughs) That would have been been a hell of a shirt. I think it was like Arrow <laughs> Castell or Abercrombie. Oh my god, me. yes. So yes. What anyway. what what year did you say that was? Well, if it was when I was in law school, it had to be like five years ago. Yeah, I was, it was like two thousand. I was trying. I was trying to get you to. I was trying to trick you, dude. Uh, you I've thought been about it. My age so long, I know all the tricks. That I'm never you admit. you thought about giving us a year. Although shout out Paul Perona on my birthday when we were in Chicago that year. The oh waitress dear lord, that ID, was an insane night too. And I passed it across the table. We were at Bub City. You're welcome, Ed Warm. Um, and yes. he took a look at my license and saw my age. Oh wow. So Paul Perona might be the only person in Nashville that knows my real age. Yeah, I I think I'm pretty offended by that because <laughs> I find us to be very, very good buddies from day one and i don't have a clue i'd st- if someone asked me i'd say 31 31 or two you'd be right yeah well, i used to be older you wear than you, it well you're older than me isn't that crazy <laughs> yeah that's crazy how time goes here i got it see how good i am let's see it the best restaurant in rome and we've been sending people there taverna trelusa Volta. the best pasta the best pasta there is they bring each dish out in its own skillet there it is. Look at that. Ouch, you were quick. Let's go. Look at that. It is insanity. It's like, I mean, I can't even explain it. It's so there damn good. That. We stumbled into it, and it was by such chance. We were lost. I, I can't. Oh, the rigatoni. Dude, it was mind-blowing. I think. Oh, oh truffle city. Yeah, that was the best. Did you ever see Goonies with the truffle shuffle? No, Every see, I'm too old. Truffles, I think of that. You people under the – oh, God. I only saw it because an older friend told me about it. I didn't grow up watching Goonies, let's be honest. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it yet, you've got to see the Truffle Shuffle. Totally worth it. Dude, here's another Here's here's another place you need to slide into the DMs too. I can see the Truffle. You ready? Yeah. It's called the Jerry Thomas Project. And it is a speakeasy that you have to have the um, – the co- Rome? Yes, in Rome. Jerry Thomas. Jerry Thomas Project. And you have to have the code word for that week. There it is. Yep, there it is. You have to have the code word. and Or else it's one of these like hidden doors with the little people. And of course, we had all these plans. We had this, that. We were going to do this. What? And my wife, you got a little bit of this in you too, where it's like, wait, they're not letting people in there. I got to go see. Go. <laughs> yes. I got to go see what exactly we're – why? If they're not going to let us in, if we're going to have to sit in this – Dun- like grimy, dungy alley. I want to know what's behind that door. And we stalked that place. She stalked it the next day and she found out the code word. So then we got in the night after, but it ruined our night. She's like, I don't know. They were letting people in there. They wouldn't let us in. They turned her away. And so anyway, this place, you'll love it. Best cocktail on the planet. Wait, did I make this up? Were you and Carly in London and I sent you to disrepute another little secret speakeasy? Probably. It looks like double. Listen, seven. here's it's a shameless downstairs. plug. Everywhere we travel, we get Chewy's travel tips. Okay, so that's how Chewy's travel tips start. So, Everybody's like, "Hey, I'm in London. Where do I go?" I was like, "Well, you got to go to Sketch." Which one is the? Uh, oh, and we had Beegs helping us too. Yeah. But but we had um the 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 train the train the old train station. Remember that the old train car one in London? in London? Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't remember that. What's the restaurant outside the city? Oh, geez, it's the best meal in London. Dude, now you're I'm asking the wrong guy. I, I got issues, man. I can't I remember think, any of this. I think you're thinking of disrepute. Maybe like so. Dancer. And Sketch was like the Alice in Wonderland place for high tea. 
Yeah, we did that. I felt so fancy. It was like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> By the way, if you're ever in London, you have to get tea at Sketch. Take your lady. The back room's pink. The bathrooms look like space pods. Yep, that place is insane. Bring your phone to the bathroom so you can Instagram it because there's no other reason to pee. Also a great city Besides for double-decker to tours. <laughs> Red <laughs> bus <double> tours. <laughs> oh, Chiltern, I did that everywhere. Chiltern Firehouse. Best I've restaurant. Never been there. Get reservations six months in advance. It's about 15 minutes outside of central London. Great. I don't even make reservations anymore because I He's always just name drop. I always just name drop Chewy's travel tips. <laughs> Chewy's travel tips is so at big. Chewy's travel tips <laughs> at sign so you can find it correctly, and it's C H U Y, not C H E W I E. So you know. Yeah. Well, common mistake. I feel honored every time. I mean, I'm like, you really don't steer us wrong, so we we trust you. I'm kind of good at that. Yeah, kind of good at that. What? what about domestic travel, though? Uh, well, you guys were almost going to go to Hawaii. I was just in Hawaii. I know. Your wife was texting me about how to get in and the COVID restrictions, and they weren't that bad. But you did have to get a negative test 72 hours before and fill some stuff out. But once you got there, it was kind of great. Highly recommend. Yeah. I mean, again, my wife, like Christmas morning, uh, we all know, tragic event downtown nashville bomb goes off so sad and we were planning on coming back a couple days later and she's like absolutely not so she just starts any possible any possible place besides <laughs> we're gonna travel somewhere so yeah she was she was blowing you up and we almost made it happen but we we didn't want to we had to drive to like the mexican border to get our covid test, COVID test. yeah so we, Wait, have we you, scratched you guys it. have been to hawaii before, yeah dude like, oh my god you're regulars i'm not a i'm not a big proponent for helicopters mm -hmm. at all but we did the um Kauai helicopter that was the first time i've been in a helicopter and that is absolutely i it is unbelievable dude and you were like it was headphones like this on a helicopter but it but this it was like jurassic park it is the most amazing thing i've ever seen in my life did you go over where they filmed jurassic park? yes it's okay. exactly it and it's just mind-boggling and i you know, I was, dude, I was in Calabasas with our boy, Jimmy Clausen. Jimmy, Jess, just, shout out, just, kids. Yes, just like a few weeks ago, and we saw, we saw where the helicopter went down in Ooh. Calabasas earlier Sad. in 2020. Yeah. We won't talk about it. Um, and Wait, so- Isn't Calabasas where the Kardashians have their Yes, store? yes. I actually can say this, and don't hate me, Kardashians. Because I'm sure you're listening. They I've are. Never watch an episode. Oof! Don't say, you can't. You're not allowed to say that, dude. You're a, you're a reality star. You have to watch other reality stars. I know, but jeez, mm. bud. But I still love you, Kim. Yeah. Tell well, me. anyways, I'm not a big. I would never send. I would never send my friends and family and uh, favorite buddies off to just ride any helicopter. But that that trip in Hawaii is worth every second of it. There it is. So, Jack Carter. Is that your boy? Up, up. That one, that was no. That's just their. Uh, that's just the helicopter tour guy. So you did Oahu. You did Waikiki and. Honolulu. I've been to Waikiki. Um, Have you ever been did, to Dukes? Because the Pro Bowl did the Dukes. 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 Get the tacos at Dukes. Got into a little trouble outside of Dukes. Tie. Yeah, that that good memories there. Not locale. Um, and then we've done Maui. We've done Kauai. Um, it's funny because we always go to Laguna Beach, right? And Laguna Beach is oh, absolutely see Laguna Beach or Hawaii Laguna no, Beach. No, look in in California. I think I made up, but I feel like there might be a Laguna Beach in oh, Hawaii. Oh, well, that's a stretch. We're gonna have to no, we're gonna Google have this. to fact check Alex that. Google this. If so, I'm right, put it up. If I'm wrong, don't. Um, and so and so I'm so sort of a crab a crab ass about you know just do we really want to go to Hawaii? It's just exactly like Orange County because I love Orange County. It's so awesome. Laguna is great. We spent a ton of time out there. And the answer is yes. Hawaii is... Wait, the answer to what is yes? Is that once we're, every time we're out there, is it, do we really want to go to Hawaii? Do we really want to go to Maui? The yes. family's going oh, to Maui. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know, man. I just, we're already in paradise. Why do we have to go? And it is that much. It is awesome. Oh, it's yeah. that feeling like you're in Thailand, like I was talking about. Like, you just have a different mindset and a different attitude. And it's pretty epic. And for all my Denver listeners, because I split time from Denver, there are direct flights on United. That's what I took. I'm a United whore. Thank you at United. Please upgrade me again to first class because I appreciate it. And we'll shout you out every episode. 
Well, I have a two-year-old now who will not wear a mask, so I can't fly United. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to edit that out? <laughs> All right, like sorry. My upgrades on one K. Sorry, my bad. Pandemic. We love United. We love United here at uh, what's our what's our podcast called? Nashville Block Party. Nashville Block Party loves United. I feel like we're like a late night radio show. Welcome to Nashville Block Party. It as it should be. Dial one eight hundred Block Party. That's way too many numbers. Bro, you're getting thin. <laughs> That's Delilah After Dark. Is that her name, Delilah? Yeah. Oh wow. The one who gives like sex tips at midnight on the radio. Who still listens to that? Like, honestly, that's like Craigslist. No, if you now everyone's just got it, just doing their own podcast. That's the same thing. I know. <laughs> Fair <laughs> point. No, I just kidding. Touché. Hey, you need to tell. You need to tell the world your stories, bro. You need to tell everyone. That's why we're doing this. It's I know. Epic. It was this or a book deal, and I can't read. <laughs> yeah, me, me neither. Or but. Right. Amazon Audible is a very good resource for that. Oh, you know, you want to know a crazy thing? I don't think I've read a book in a decade. That's, we should probably work on that, but I I think that that's okay. I mean, they've made it too easy. They've and made it too to easy. The they funny? have like 1.25 and 1.5 speed. You can just hammer books. That's just not fair. And you want to know a funny thing is I downloaded and listened to my first ever podcast last week. It was actually probably a podcast by Shannon Ford and Mary Carlisle, who Shannon will be a guest on ours going forward. But I promise anyone out there, if you download my podcast, I'll download yours. Whoa, yeah. I'm desperate. What was it? What, Listen what, to me, please. That's like an Uber rating. Five for five? Five for five? Hey, hey, you going to give me a five-point rating? Just make sure you give me five stars, because if you're not, uh, uh, you got to make sure I get five. You get five. Do you know I've never given an Uber rating lower than five, and I've probably never tipped less than 20%. Even to rude servers. Like, I just feel guilty. I have Jewish guilt. Mom, that's your fault. Wow. That's really impressive. Again, just an absolute savant human being. Because for me, if you, I mean, I've just, 20% is a strong number. And if you are rude or do something, you know, that I don't agree with, it's easily at 15. In a, se a second, it's going down to 15. See, the math is easy with 20. You just <laughs> it is the true. last number <laughs> off and times it by two, and then you have 20%. You're so right. So it's 40, it's $8. We're actually learning general math on um, Nashville Block Party today. That's today's lesson, so you don't need Sesame Street. I just had to slow that down in my head and make sure you were right, but you got it, man. You got it. One thing you'll learn is I'm always right. Well, I've learned that, bro. You've been out with me. I'm always right. I like I, the, what's fun about going out with Block here, Chewy, Nashville Block Party Mark, is that it is. always it always starts pretty nonchalant. It's always like, oh hey, I'm here. <laughs> Come in texting and kind of on the phone and like, yeah, hey guys, oh good to see you and everyone. And then <laughs> there's always a point. It's like <laughs> I'll have a vodka soda, still vodka soda, or a white claw. Vodka soda is my backup yeah. drink to White Claw. Yeah, White Claw, White Claw, White Claw, White Claw, White Claw, White Claw, White, White Claw, Claw, White Claw. You need a show sponsor, White Claw. Black cherry. Um, and so uh, I kind of love the tangerine too, guys. Do you really? Yes, that's Sick. my second favorite. God. Just don't give me Hawaii, or we're not going to be friends. Um, which is really weird. Anyway, I'm so weird. it's always ends. It always starts out pretty low key and it, whatever. And this is probably a lot of people, but it's <laughs> it's really true. And then. As the, you know, I wouldn't, I can't give it a, it varies. I can't give it an exact time frame or a number of drinks, but there is a point Two. where there is a point when you, I can look at you and go, oh, hell yes. It flipped that we flipped the switch and we went from like, just have a drink and watch the game to like, oh, hell yeah. We're going to be yelling at people and we're going to maybe have our eyes closed and, and like walking around blacked out. Like it, 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 there is that look and I'm like, oh, Yes! I love it, dude. And I haven't seen it for a while. It goes from sober to yelling roll tide at strangers to falling asleep at the bar. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's just it's pretty much I, the transition. That's a normal dr drunken evolution, though, I'd say. Just normal, just normal steps to, 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 to going home. But I'll tell you one of this is, this is a, tr this is serious, though. Uh -oh. And I'm glad I just remembered this because. This happens way too often. It's happened since day one, bro. You know, I, I get that mom fear, right? I, I like worry about everybody. I like to get 
completely belligerent, hammered, and do stupid shit like with everyone else. But I always get a little worried and make sure everyone – this guy is notorious for sneaking out and – and what is it? What does he call it? The Monte. The Houdini. The Houdini. Yeah, he's the, the Houdini. I disappear. It's the Houdini. And it's like one minute he can't even control, like he doesn't know where he's at. And then he's gone. And I'm sitting there going, any, literally anything could have happened to this guy. And no one can get a hold of him. And he's gone. And we're leaving. We're going to the next bar. Or everyone's looking for him. The whole bar shuts, turns the lights on. And where's Chewy? What's going on? I mean, this is t- every single time. And. Oh, I'm at home, man. Just made it home. I'm like, you mother... <laughs> you did it again, bro. And I swear we've had like this this brotherly, com- brotherly conversation where I'm like, dude, Houdini on everyone else. I won't peer pressure you. You can't do that to me because I freak out and lose it. I will say. It's I've not ma- cool. I've made it home every time except once in college. I woke up in a ditch in a construction site. Yeah. And I was in Miami. I went to Miami, but I had a Penn State hat. And I really liked that hat. And I lost it because they found me the next day i thought i was going into my dorm but i was trying to get into the fitness center at the university of miami sorry canes and then i couldn't find my way so i slept in a ditch um, just trying to get a workout in <laughs> middle of the night I was I was <laughs> just get a sweat on not, what the I hell were you doing guy i was a sigma chi till i die in hoax sigma chi what year was that night what year was that that was 2011 <laughs> Minus about a lot of years. <laughs> we're gonna get that. We're gonna that is gonna come it's out. So I'm gonna trick too, him because when I was in college, hazing was so much more acceptable. Oh, that dude. I was in hazing, I'm just saying other fraternities and other people were hazed. Can they retroactively go back and punish our fraternity? Maybe who, no, who's telling? No, uh, who knows, man? I don't think so. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to rat you out. But yes. So I mean, it wasn't even that bad. But today, like. Everyone's so PC, like you can't even be hazed in a fraternity, and that's why this younger generation just isn't as tough as we are. And you missed that Penn Can State hat. Tell by, really? by my voice how tough I am. Yes. <laughs> he's really worked You never me. got that Penn State hat back, man. That's sad. I didn't. I didn't. But, you know, I never went to Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So. What I mean, else are you going to talk about on your podcast, man? I don't know. I mean, do you have any other suggestions or ideas? Well, I don't know what I don't know what you're trying. I don't know what kind of you know stories we're allowed to tell on here, or how crazy that I mean, you're allowed maybe to get. Maybe season two will bring back. <laughs> yeah, to tell because the real we can see how season one goes. Things could get pretty ugly if we told the truth. Oh man, <laughs> jeez, bud. Yeah. So I mean, what we can keep it. We can keep it. <laughs> Me and Mark have a lot of dirt on each other that we're saving for the sequel, the next round. Yeah. What else we got? You guys, is there anything else we should talk about? You're like the bro. That's great, dude. Was it good? It was fantastic. We're at 41 minutes right now. Is that good? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so is we're it? a good podcast time. Sweet. And you know what? You're such a good guest that I only thought we were talking for like 19 minutes. Hey, hey you know what? Good. You know, time flies when you're having fun, man. Anything you want to plug? No. Besides at Chewy's Travel Tips or at the Block Agency on Instagram? <sighs> no. You, you didn't. You, you What's your Instagram? It. We need to get you some more followers. No, too. I just, I don't. I'm a bad follow, dude. I post only Mav stuff these days. That's actually My true. Twitter's better than my uh, Instagram. And his kid's adorable, and his kid has his own Instagram, but don't follow it because that's creepy. Well, he's he's very, he's he's actually very uh, sensitive to who, who he allows in. family. How adorable. For those of you just listening, we have video versions. Jeez, dude. Look at that guy. Oh, Mark and Carly, real estate. Oh! Slide There's shot. my dude. There it is, man. He's two. He's not allowed on United. Look we got to cut that. that off. I know, bro. That's a really good pick. Just a just a cheese, dude. I don't. You guys look like a sitcom couple. I just, I hate being. Central I hate. Casting. I hate that. Do you think I could make it on the block agency? I think we. That's something we didn't talk about. Yeah. You um. You supplemented. Yeah, yes. supplemented my wife's income, which was very. It was very helpful during those early days because then she wasn't spending my money. money. That was fantastic. That was awesome, and I appreciate that. She used to be what we used to call Chewy's Angels. Yeah, what do you mean used to be? models. We've moved on. I don't think it's as appropriate in 2021 to use the term Chewy's Angels. What? I think people come at me for being sexist. 
Because wow. we didn't call the guys Chewy's Angels or Chewy's Devils, so we used to call the girls Chewy's Angels. Mm, was, I don't like that. I think I'm going to still call it Chewy's Angels. I think we should bring it back, <laughs> Chewy's Angels. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Victoria's Secret thing, I mean, except not. Guy goes and buys a guy. Guy goes and buys a new business and moves to Denver, and then comes back and says Chewy's Angels is dead. Like that's not that's not how it works. Time out. I did not move to Denver. I oh, have a sorry. Second residents in denver my prime the irs isn't listening bro nashville. <laughs> nashville is home the IRS. i love nashville I'm, i spent six months and one day in nashville I'm, easy i'm whatever Yankee by birth and southern by the grace of god as wow they say. wow you Full are tied does that make me southern toddy toddy you can't Go mix dogs. them you can't mix them. <laughs> <laughs> hell state <laughs> Ooh, big suey <laughs> Are you Arkansas? Throw an Arkansas in there. Who, who am I missing? Missouri anchor down. Count. Sorry, guys. I dropped Anchor down, bro. Oh, anchor down. Go, Vandy. Come on. Wow. All right. Well, that's a wrap on one of our first episodes. Hey, man. I think we you're going to explode, you bro. You're, cr- you're going to crush it. We got... Hold on. Let me do another plug, even though we don't have any sponsorships. One of Mark's oh, hell games yeah. is Moonshine. Oh, so yeah, bro. Old Smoky Moonshine. Adam Warren, you're welcome. Um, great downtown bar in Nashville. Yeehaw. Sells moonshine. It's pretty amazing to do shots with. Tastes great. Got you the Blackberry version because on uh, 104.5 The Zone, where Mark is a sports talk host, Yes, they call him Moonshine. So here you that go. That is cool. Dude, you're just so generous, bro. Thank you. It was like six that is, that is that is a, That is one of the more prouder things i love that nickname dude it's sort of di- it's the nickname sort of died a few years ago there's a few guys brent doherty the mayor still well, sorry brent. don't mean to offend you you're the mayor he, he's the mayor i don't know how that works between you guys and i might even run for mayor <laughs> I, Ooh, are you guys, we launching a campaign? this is not a joke he actually thinks he's going to do this at some point we've I had this conversation have an exploratory committee out <laughs> yeah. there or i might not who knows but that my first couple years playing they called me moonshine and i was like no, I don't just call myself that. It's fine, whatever. No, I fucking love it. That's awesome. It's sick. <laughs> love that. Nick- and anyways. Yeah, there have been more sick games. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. That's Good to see you. That's Thank a wrap. You.